Hello class, this is Miss Augustine. Today we're going to talk about Aufbau exceptions, and those are electron configurations that do not follow the Aufbau principle. So remember when we're drawing electron configuration diagrams, we have to draw our energy levels and orbitals according to the three rules. Those being the Aufbau principle, we start at the lowest energy and work our way up to higher energy levels. That we have to follow the Pauli exclusion principle the maximum number of electrons that can be placed in an orbital is two, and that they have opposite spins. We show that with an arrow pointing up and an arrow pointing down. The third rule is Hund's rule, and that governs um, sublevels that have more than one equivalent orbital. So when we're talking about the sublevels um, P, D, F, and higher, where you have more than one equivalent orbital. We have to follow Hund's rule. That means we have to make sure that there's one electron in each orbital before we start putting second electrons in and pairing them up. And there are some exceptions to these rules, and those exceptions are in groups 6 and 11 on the periodic table. So we hold you responsible for chromium, copper, and molybdenum, and I will show you how that works. Remember that when we're drawing these diagrams, we have three ways that we can show them. The first way is the orbital notation, and that's where we actually draw each orbital and fill in the little arrows for the electrons. The second method is using shorthand the electron configuration notation, where we use superscripts to show the number of electrons. So we would do 1s2, 2s2, and so forth. And the third way is the noble gas configuration, and that allow, allows us to shorthand further by putting in the noble gas that comes before whatever element we're diagramming. So now let's talk about these exceptions to the Aufbau rule. Um, the electron configurations do not follow the Aufbau principle, and again, I mentioned chromium, copper, and molybdenum. So let's look at chromium first. Chromium has atomic number 24. There are 24 electrons. The Aufbau principle would predict an electron configuration of argon and then 3d4 and 4s2. So um, what we would expect here is that the S sublevel fills, and then the Ds would start filling in, and there would only be 4D electrons. Experimentally, though, what we actually find is 3D5 and 4S1. So let me show you what that looks like. This is what the Aufbau principle would predict with a full uh, 4S, and then the uh, last four electrons would go into the D sublevel, and so you would have the fifth D orbital is empty. What actually occurs, though, is that the electron from the 4S actually goes up and enters the 3D. So it actually turns out that chromium has 4s1, only one electron, and 3d5. And why does this happen? Apparently, having one electron in each of the d orbitals is more stable, meaning lower energy, than what the Aufbau would predict. And they all follow this pattern. So now let's look at copper, which has atomic number 29. And again, the Aufbau principle would predict a 3d9 and a 4s2, but what we experimentally find is 3d10, 4s1. So let's see what that looks like. So again, the Aufbau principle would predict the 4s2 and 3d9, and what actually happens experimentally is the 4s electron actually goes up and fills the 3d sublevel. So it turns out that having all five d orbitals filled with paired electrons is more stable, and so we end up with just one electron in the s level. And then the third one that we hold responsible for is molybdenum, which is atomic number 42. So the Aufbau principle would predict the electron configuration of 5s2 and 4d4. 
and what we experimentally find is one of those S electrons goes up and fills in a D sublevel orbital. So what does that look like? Again, this is what Aufbau would predict, 5s2, 4d4, and what we actually find experimentally is that one of the s electrons goes up into the d sublevel. So again, having one electron per d orbital is more stable and lower energy. So those are our Aufbau expectations exceptions, and I'm going to end it there. This is Miss Augustine signing off.